Jose Bustani is a veteran Brazilian diplomat who served as the OPCW's first director general. At the UN Security Council last week, the US, Britain, France, and their allies voted to prevent Bustani from speaking. He had come to the UN to defend two former OPCW inspectors who challenged a cover-up of their investigation in Syria. These inspectors found evidence that the Syrian government did not commit a chemical weapons attack in the city of Douma in April 2018. Their findings undermined the basis for the bombing of Syria by the US, UK, and France that same month. But the inspector's evidence was suppressed under US government pressure. Well, today in a Gray Zone exclusive, Bustani speaks to me about his support for the OPCW whistleblowers, two veteran scientists who he worked with during his tenure as the OPCW's first director general. These OPCW inspectors involved in the Duma scandal, they're so experienced with the OPCW that their tenure actually coincides with your time as the OPCW's first director general, because from what we know of them, both of them have served at the OPCW since the start when you were there. Inspector A, as he's known in OPCW documents, has been identified. His name is Ian Henderson. And he spoke recently at a UN Security Council meeting a week before the one that you were prevented from speaking at. The other inspector, Inspector B, has not been publicly identified. There's also someone referred to as Alex, who you actually heard a briefing from, but Alex's identity has not been identified either. But because these inspectors were there back when you were at the OPCW, did you know them? And if so, what was your impression of them? Absolutely. Absolutely. I know them uh, very, very well. And I uh, then at that time, they were, uh, some of them were the team leaders, as we call uh, the, the ones that uh, lead uh, a group of inspections, of inspectors. Uh, they are extremely competent, uh, uh, all of them. In fact, uh, uh, they always impressed me because they were extremely uh, professional and extremely reliable. One of them in particular, uh, Inspector uh, B, was one that uh, I assigned to a very sensitive area of the OPCW, which is the confidentiality office. I had some difficulties then with that particular office, with the uh, stuff that was there, and I needed someone to put some, you know, order there, as someone that I could rely on because of the professionalism and, and uh, the information and the re reliability in particular. And this is one of the inspectors that we are referring to today, they went to Duma. Uh, Ian Anderson is a well-known name uh, in the OPCW as well. And uh, Alex is also another extremely efficient and competent inspector. So these are people with whom I have worked from the very beginning, whom I trust. And that's what uh, made me accept to come to the fore because uh, I, was, uh, I was allowed uh, uh, by uh, them, and I, I got in touch with one of the particular inspectors uh, who showed me uh, uh, important elements, uh, original documents of, of the inspect inspections that were carried out, and uh, the text of the letter that was addressed to then Director General. Uh, and I was impressed by uh, the relevance, the arguments that were shown, and it did not match the way uh, uh, I remember inspect inspections were carried out during my tenure. So I felt that I should come and give them a hand uh, so that uh, because of their qualifications, they are an asset to the OPCW, or they were. Uh, they should be given a chance of bringing uh, to the Director General uh, the real results of their inspections, since the results were sort of uh, 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 manipulated or parts of the of the report were not uh, uh, given to member states, etc. So I, I believe that I, it was my duty as first director general to come uh, uh, and help the, these inspectors because they are an asset to the PCW. And by helping them, 
bring to the full, to the, the director general, uh, their report, their honest report of what they found out, uh, would give the OPCW also a chance of uh, uh, being more and more respected internationally. Unfortunately, for some reason, uh, uh, the mainstream media does not cover this issue, has not covered this issue, except for important sites like yours or um, one or another minor publication. Uh, this question does not appear to be known to the international community. Not a single newspaper that I know of, uh, be it in France, uh, in, in England, in, in the UK and United States, or nobody, nobody knows that there is such a question going on within the OPCW, and it's a pity, because uh, uh, if they are given the opportunity to set the record straight, I believe that OPCW would 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 win. Would be good for the OPCW to to, as I said before, to resurrect as the organization that it should always be a very reliable and non-politicized organization. This is my point of view. It was reported last year and later on confirmed by Ian Henderson when he spoke to the UN Security Council that a US delegation visited The Hague and met with the Duma inspectors directly very early on in their investigation. This was after the team had submitted their report and had their report doctored and key evidence removed. And just days before a new report, a compromise interim report was issued, the inspectors were told to meet with a U.S. delegation who tried to lobby them to convince them that a chlorine attack had occurred, which is what months later the OPCW's final report would indeed conclude. Does this strike you as unusual if this had happened under your watch if a u.s delegation had met with a opcw inspection team and tried to lobby them into concluding something what would have been your reaction this would have never happened if i were a director general the inspectors know themselves that they cannot they cannot they are not supposed to meet with delegations on the, on issues like inspections in particular I don't know how it happened. Maybe they were forced to, or they were led to by, I don't know how it, it in, in practice happened because uh, uh, if I were director general, this would never happen, never. And given that these inspectors are supposed to be protected, supposed to remain anonymous, given that they came face to face with a delegation of US officials, do you think that that could have jeopardized these OPCW inspectors security? Well, not only the West, but any state should not be meddling with the uh, inspectors, in particular during a particular uh, a crisis like the Syrian crisis was. It was, in fact, the first alleged use of chemical weapons in, that I remember the issue in the, in the history of the OPCW. So it is a very sensitive issue. Uh, it required the total discretion on the part of the inspectors, on the part of delegations, on the part of, uh, of uh, the direction of, of the OPCW. So um, I felt it very, very uh, uncalled for. Uh, really, it surprised me enormously that such an event took place. I would not have allowed that to happen. There was an OPCW inquiry that was conducted into these inspectors and its results were released earlier this year. Neither inspector was accused of leaking anything to the media, but they did come under heavy criticism. The inquiry was used to portray them as rogue actors with incomplete information. And it also included some identifying information about both the inspectors. It included their years of service, which would have made it pretty easy for people to identify them and figure out who they are. With Ian Henderson, it was already known who he was because his name was on one of the first leaked reports. But the other inspector, Inspector B, no one had known who he was until this identifying information from the OPCW was said to the public. Do you think that was appropriate for the OPCW to include identifying information about Inspector B? Listen, Aaron, I don't know how the OPCW behaves uh, 
of CW behaves these days, and I hope that this, he's not in danger, any kind of danger. I don't know how they they are dealing with such issues. Uh, I have no I have no information, particular information on 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 how they are being treated as as of recent as of recent days. Uh, but uh, I, I hope that. Uh, it would be a loss for the OPCW if such inspectors were uh, were considered redundant because uh, we are talking about a very serious group of professionals. Uh, so they are an asset to, to the organization. Uh, but then I go, uh, I, 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 who am I to interfere with the present uh, direction of the organization? I, uh, he, the director must know what he's doing. But the fact that this identifying information, Inspector B's exact years of service at the OPCW, the fact that that was included publicly, do you think that was necessary for the OPCW to reveal? Absolutely. Why? What difference does it make? I don't understand why this information was made public. It doesn't change anything. What would change was to, to, to hear them, to get together and let them speak. When Ian Henderson testified recently at the UN Security Council, he said that there's been an impenetrable wall of silence inside the OPCW when it comes to weighing the evidence that was suppressed in the Duma investigation, that it's just been impossible for these inspectors to be heard. You mentioned earlier that the media also has not covered this story at all, which has been, for me, pretty extraordinary, seeing that a case where whistleblowers are claiming that their own investigation was compromised and that the evidence that they found undermined the basis for U.S.-led military strikes on a foreign country, but yet this has not been covered at all. Do you think that if the media covered this story, that that could make a difference in pressuring the OPCW to hear the inspectors and let them air the evidence that was suppressed? I would hope so. I would hope so. Yeah. I would hope so. Uh, from, from, from my past experience, political experience, it does cause an impact. It has a weight. The main media has a weight, of course. I believe that if the New York Times or one of the British papers, uh, Le Figaro in France or uh, Le Monde, they would uh, take this issue, uh, uh, write about this issue. I think that this would really help the cause for those inspectors. And the OPCW would be more, uh, I hope, uh, morally uh, constrained to uh, to, uh, to take action in relation to their request. They are not requesting much. <laughs> we want to be heard and to be given a chance uh, to show their own report. And in particular, this, this director now is not the same director that received the, the, the first in report. So he's sort of fresh in, in the area. So it would be much easier for him to, uh, to deal with this, this, this request. Yes, as far as we know, the current director general, Fernando Arias, and his predecessor have never met, not just with the two dissenting inspectors that we know about, but with the entire Duma team, the investigators who actually went to Syria for the investigation. And on that front, let me ask you, it's been revealed that after the initial report from the OPCW inspectors was censored, that they and the other inspectors were essentially sidelined from the investigation and they were replaced by a core team of people who had never set foot in Duma except for one paramedic, but everybody else was not there. Does that strike you as unusual? Would that have ever happened under your watch? Absolutely not. It would have never happened to me unless there have been, uh, that there was a, uh, uh, a, a serious violation of the code of conduct uh, on the part of the inspectors, which fortunately never, never happened. 
For people who are just learning about this OPCW controversy now, if you could comment on why you think it is so important for these OPCW inspectors to be heard, for their story to be covered, and for the OPCW to let them air the evidence that was suppressed, to let the facts be weighed in a transparent manner. Why this is important, not just for the OPCW, but for the world. First of all, because of the science. First, secondly, because inspectors are competent and they normally do their job uh, very honestly and very seriously, very professionally. And second, because it's important for the uh, uh, OPCW itself. If doubts are being raised in different quarters of the world by persons uh, like you and others, it, it, it inspectors themselves, uh, why not allow them to tell the truth? And if, if they are wrong, it should be told to the international community today, the specters were wrong. And if they are right, let's go back, reopen the case and see what went wrong during that particular inspection. As simply as simple as that. And that would help the organization. Why maintain this doubt in the air? Why? What's the use of that? The only reason I can see is that they, they are afraid of the, of the truth of the real report written by the inspectors. Otherwise they would not be, uh, uh, they would not be against that. They would not be against that. And I believe that the director general himself has a very important role to play. He is the director general. He, is the, he has the mandate to listen to the inspectors. He's, he has to listen to the, no, <laughs> any of the staff members, particularly in cases like that. Why is it that he refused to? He doesn't want to know the truth. Why? I think it would be wonderful for, if I were Director General, I would definitely listen to the specters and, and then decide what to do. And in case the, they are wrong, let, let the membership know that they were wrong. And in case they were right, raise the issue again, um, revisit <clears throat> the whole question of these inspections. And that would be Wonderful for the organization to show that the organization uh, can, you know, uh, can uh, undo uh, something that was uh, wrongly done. Uh, but uh, as I said, every director general has its own view of the issue and uh, its own way of, uh, of uh, managing the organization. I would have given the inspectors a chance, absolutely, absolutely.